Okay, it's our second week of Wake Up the Echoes. We have a very special guest, someone that I know Coach Freeman knows, Jessica Smetana. Is your, we want, should we start over? Let's just start. Oh, we, Sorry, we I don't know. want to keep it in? You should have kept that. We can keep it in. Oh, oh boy. My microphone just. Tell Dan Levitar to, to get screen. a new uh, engineer. I know. Yeah, yeah. And they shoved me in the green room. Do you see this background? <laughs> Please do not do anything inappropriate with my background right now. I think we were going to get, I thought we were going to get the real, the whole full shebang there, but I guess oh, not. Oh, me too. Me All too. Right. Well, not maybe, important enough for that yet. Maybe, maybe we'll keep this in. Who knows? But we're joined by <laughs> Jessica Smetana of Metal Arc Media, uh, Notre Dame grad, most importantly. She's joining us today. I know she has. Uh, a ton of questions for Coach Freeman. So I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you kind of spit. Go ahead. Well, thank you for having me on, Tony. Uh, it's good to see you again. But I do have a really important question because I heard that during Coach's press conference today, the hot dog narrative around the Audric Estime 80-yard <laughs> run got debunked, and I'm devastated. Oh. I thought – this man went into the locker room during the lightning postponement, ate a hot dog, came out, and ripped off an 80-yard run. But I'm being told you actually had a very sophisticated nutrition plan in place for the postponement. So tell me the truth. What happened? Hey, a wise man once told me never let the truth get in the way of a good story, right? So we should just go ahead and go along with this story that Audric came in. We didn't have any food, so we had to go stand in line at the concession stand, got him a hot dog, and he ran an 80-yard touchdown. I like this, actually. The press conference is where the formal narrative That's can right. be handled, and this is where we can start all of our conspiracy theories this is a perfect space for conspiracy this is well, there's yeah. it, well here's the reality of it is <laughs> that we had all these great nutritional food like like we had chicken wraps and turkey wraps and healthy food and audrick says um i want one hot dog please and so he eats the hot dog and then he ends up running a 70 yard touchdown but that's the reality of it we had healthy food audrick Probably had a little bit of the healthy food and a hot dog. I'm now worried maybe his diet's <laughs> going to change before the game going forward now. <laughs> it's a balanced diet. Um, I'm wondering, Marcus, what is the the worst meal you ever ate before an athletic endeavor? Like, did you get 10 McChickens before a football practice at any point in your career? Oh, I'm I'm sure I've eaten something unhealthy before, like high school. Like, in our college, I was pretty – you know, structured in terms of the things I ate. But in high school, I mean, you could eat. If you had $2, you were going to McDonald's and, and getting two things off the dollar menu. It is what it is. And so I don't want to think about what I ate back then, you know. Um, it never came out, I don't think. But, um, yeah, I probably wasn't the healthiest eater back then. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it, it did remind me of my soccer career. I ate, like, a, an, a giant Cadoba quesadilla once before running around for 120 minutes. But that's a story for another day. I want to talk about <laughs> – the NC State game, because I was curious, going into the game, I think a lot of Notre Dame fans had rain delay PTSD from the last time they played at in, in Raleigh in 2016. Is that sort of recent history something that you're made aware of going into a week where, you know, maybe fans have a little bit of a sting thinking about a matchup? Yeah, we had uh, quite a few members of our staff that were here, the support staff that reminded me or told me about the 2016 game and I mean, it just sounded like we were playing football in a, a, a shallow lake is from what I hear, you know, and that's the, <laughs> the imagery they, they gave me <laughs> is that we're playing football like in a lake. But, um, yeah, we did. We did have a rain plan, you know, and, and, you know, it's part of like the wet ball plan. Like, is it truly just a rain plan or is it a delay? You know, we didn't know we were going to be delayed for two hours. And so we had to make sure that um, we had plans for both. And um, it was well executed by our staff. Mm. Was there any point where you were like, what if we don't finish this game and it ends a 3-0 win for us? Oh, a dub is a dub, <laughs> right? As long as we get a W, Jess. Is it true? I actually heard that they were saying they could start the game, restart it any time before midnight. Did that ever come to yeah. you? Yeah, that's the ACC rules. Oh. Um, but no, they never – they, they kind of said, hey, this – this storm should be out should of here pass. in the next okay. hour and a half. And so well, first we thought, okay, 30-minute break, and then they came back and reported, okay, it sounds like it's going to go until another hour or so. Mm -hmm. And so it was, again, that break, it's like, what do you do? All right, you got 30 minutes where you're sitting there like, okay, what are we going to – when are we getting back out there? Mm -hmm. Then you get 30 minutes to make some adjustments and talk about, you know, what happened in the first quarter. Then 30 minutes of – so when you get to the stadium, an away game, you really – like you have – 45 minutes to just sit like you sit there and you you look around and and you act like your your game plan you really just like <laughs> come on let's go and warm up let's get this game going and so it was kind of like doing that all over again 
Is there any point where you're making adjustments and then the delay keeps getting longer and you don't want to overload the players with yeah. too much information because yeah. then they're going to be just too much going on before they get back on the field? Absolutely. I told the coaching staff, make a couple adjustments and leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Leave them alone. Like, they don't want to just hang out with us. And then we probably don't want to sit in there for an hour and a half and hang out with them. Yeah, you know, yeah. give them their own time and um, let them just get, be in their modes. And coaches, we kind of went to the locker room. I wanted to lay down. Like, there was just so many people in there. And, uh, you know, yeah, we can't overload those guys, you know, because they're not going to retain all that information. How do you game plan for an opposing linebacker who runs like a 4 2 40? I mean, Jeez, that guy like, was really yeah, fast. Yeah. That dude could fly. And and Tyree doesn't want to admit it. Oh, but man. I really think he caught it. He caught him. I really yeah. We discussed this really. He got caught. I mean, yeah. he could fly. Like, I don't know where he's from, but that, that guy. <laughs> I knew going into the game he was a player. Like, you can see on film, like, 11, their linebacker's a dude. Yeah. And to see him live in the person, like, he caught Tobias Merritt with him. Like, he was – and he's a linebacker. Mm -hmm. um, he is – he's a good player. He's a really good player. Mm. Early in the game when maybe things aren't clicking so well, are you making adjustments or were you like, I'm going to wait till halftime or I'm going to wait and see what the weather does? Or how do you decide when you're going to start realizing like, okay, something's not working. We have to kind of go back to the drawing board, look at what NC State's defense is doing and yeah. readjust here. You do it every series, right? In between series, you're on the headsets and we're making adjusts. Hey, what did they do? Why weren't we successful on this play? So you basically – you, you go over every single play during the series, okay. right? Why, so why the defense is on the field, the offense is going play by play. What happened on this play? Why did he get sacked? Who missed the block? Why did we not have a good play? And then you make your adjustments and you go. And then the next series, we went three and out again, right? <laughs> and um, so we said, okay, we got to make these adjustments. And then, um, and, but that's how it is, man. Yeah. It's like in between series, that is such crucial time to make sure you're making those proper adjustments how much more comfortable are you doing that now just in year two compared to year one when you you know you're yeah. dc before now you're involved with everything how much more comfortable are you well i have to be comfortable letting our letting coordinators do their jobs, do their jobs yeah. right like because when the offense is on the field i need to be on the offensive headset and when the defense is on the field i got to be with the defense and so you know you got some tv timeouts where you can talk through some things hey guys what are we seeing we don't need to panic last year i would have panicked like last year like I would have been yelling, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? What's going on? Fix it. Well, that's obvious. Like, like you're just repeating things like that everybody that. knows, it. right? Good... Hey, get it fixed. <laughs> uh, yeah, coach, duh. Like, what's what we're trying to do? Um, so the ability to kind of just stay calm and say, hey, what's okay. going on? What are we seeing? Are we good? You know, any changes we need to make? And then I let them kind of get to work. Yeah. 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 Likewise, when you're in the middle of a – defensive series and players are making some mistakes there's some penalty flags but they're still out on the field what do you do in that situation when nc state's offense can't get off the field um yeah you know i think about the ben morrison play and one that's just so uncharacteristic of ben mm -hmm. then i kind of look at mick who coach mickens mike mickens and i'm like what's he doing like <laughs> what is wrong with Ben why did he do that and it's a great reminder hey write it down we'll go address it when he when he yeah. gets off the field but you can't fix it right there in the middle of the play you just got to write it down and make sure we address it you know enhance the face uh, I, I just wanted to argue with the ref a little bit and sure. say I don't agree with it and then we had a defensive holding so just again it was a snowball effect that we got to say hey let's not beat Notre Dame get them mm -hmm. to the sidelines don't beat Notre Dame we can't have three penalties on a drive because it's going to equal seven points and so settle down Focus on the things that matter. Mm. Okay, last question, because I know you have to go. Um, you have a very busy schedule. But <laughs> aside from, like, oh, the fans, what what do you look forward the most about coming back to play at home after being on a road trip? You can't say the fans, though. That yeah. That's too okay. obvious. Mm. Other than the fans, mm. you know. Mm. I just – you just love our home game routines, right? You love staying in a hotel that – you have comfort with that routine, the going to mass in the Basilica, the the pregame walk over to the stadium. I mean, there's that level of comfort of being home, you know, and then playing at Notre Dame Stadium, there's nothing like it. Yeah. But that's what you love is that you're not in a foreign territory. You know, you go sometimes these way games, you don't know where to go, where to turn, where's our meeting rooms, what time are we leaving? And you get lost sometimes. But at home, you have a routine and you have a comfort level. If there was a weather delay at Notre Dame Stadium, there would have been a lot more comfort in that weather delay, I'm sure. We talked about that. We we got to see the rules and things because, like, are we allowed to go 
back to the the Goog. Yeah. Are we allowed to go and have a walkthrough in the That's IAC? Like, there's obviously some some benefits of being home during a delay. Yeah. But I don't. We're not 100 percent sure on the rules. Like, can we actually leave the stadium and go and have a walkthrough? Interesting. You go know, to the dining so, hall. That's right. Yeah. You know, we should go have a party. Let's go, you know. <laughs> Depending on how long that break is, we'll see. I hope we don't hit a big weather delay like that this year, but I'm glad that you guys are on top of it so that if yeah. we do, we'll have a game plan to uh, maximize its potential whenever it happens. That's right. Make sure we have a couple hot dogs. <laughs> oh, many, plenty of hot dogs. <laughs> Coach, thank you. Jess, stay right here. We're going to keep talking after we let Coach Ruman get out of here. All right. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Enjoy Miami. <laughs> oh, oh I... my God. Get that thing <laughs> fixed, please. Okay.